بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ایم عارف اینڈ آئی ویلکم یو آر ٹو دا نیکسٹ سیشن آف سسٹم پروگرامنگ وتھ لینکس ٹوڈے وی ار گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس دا کانسیپٹ آف میموری میپ فائلس ان یونکس دا ایجنڈا آف ٹوڈے سیشن از شون آن دس سلائڈ ویل ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس اے میموری میپ فائل از موسٹلی a segment of virtual memory that has been assigned a direct byte for byte correlation with some portion of a file on disk and memory mapped io let us map a file on disk into a buffer in process address space so that when we fetch bytes from the buffer the corresponding bytes of the file are read similarly when we store data in the buffer the corresponding bytes are automatically written to the file This lets us perform I.O. without using the read or write system calls. Well, there are two types of memory map files. The persisted files are actually associated with a source file on disk. The data is saved to the source file on the disk once the last process is finished. The non-persisted or anonymous mapping are actually not associated with the file on disk and when the last process is finished working with the file the data is lost this slide shows how a persisted file or file mapping works well this is a logical address space of a process which we have seen and discussed many a times in our previous session and this area between the stack and the heap is reserved for shared memory shared libraries and the memory mappings and right now we are interested as how a file on disk can be mapped in the address space of a process okay suppose there is a text file named file1.txt on the hard disk and we want a portion of this file to be mapped in the address space of this process We can use mmap system call for this task and on success this call will return the starting address where the portion of the file is mapped. Later the process can access the file contents as it can access the memory without the need to use a read or write system calls to read or write the file contents on disk. When a process which has memory mapped a file do a fork the child process inherits the mappings and unrelated processes can also map the same file and perform inter process communication well over here you can see the linear view of this file we can of course map the entire file but right now we have memory mapped a portion of this file starting from the offset and the area of the file to be mapped is this much bytes well there are two types of uh, this file mapping the shared and the private let's talk about the shared file mapping first well this means multiple processes uh, mapping the same region of a file share the same physical pages of memory whenever a process tries to write the modifications to the contents of the mapping are carried through the file and main uses of shared file mapping is memory mapped io and ipc well in case of a private file mapping modifications are not visible to other processes multiple processes mapping the same file initially share the same physical pages of memory but whenever a process tries to write copy on write technique is employed so that changes to the mapping by one process are not visible to other processes the main use of private file mapping is initializing a process text and initialized data segments from the corresponding parts of a binary executable file or or maybe a shared library file let us now discuss the mmap call that is used to request the creation of memory mappings in the address space of the calling process and as i have already said on success it returns the starting address of the mapping 
Well, this first argument ADDR indicates the virtual address at which the mapping is to be located. Preferably, we should give a null over here so that the kernel chooses a suitable address for the mapping that doesn't conflict with any existing mapping. This second argument, len, specifies the size of the mappings in bytes. To map an entire file, we put len as size of the file. This uh, third argument, prot, is a bit mask specifying the permissions. It can be prot read, prot write, or prot exec. You can see the man pages for, for details. As far as the fourth argument is concerned, this can be either map private or map shared as discussed. And this fifth argument FD is the file descriptor and defining the file to be mapped and the sixth argument offset specifies the starting point of the mapping of the file. In case if you want to map the entire file we would specify offset as zero and and this len as the size of the file. Well dear students if in case if you want to do a non-persisted or anonymous mapping you normally put a minus one at this place in place of FD and a zero for offset. Uh, msync, this function causes the changes in part or all of the memory segment to be written back to or maybe read from the map file. Uh, this first argument to msync is ADDR and this is the same address that is returned by the previous mmap call. The second argument len specifies the length of the mapping and the third argument flags controls as how the update should be performed. And uh, the three options for this flag are we can do asynchronous uh, update, a synchronous update or maybe invalidate. Well, finally m unmap uh, this simply unmaps the memory map region pointed to by, by this ADDR and size len. We normally unmap an entire mapping, thus we specify ADDR as uh, the address returned by the previous call to mmap and specify the same length value as we have used in the mmap call. Uh, well, dear students, remember memory map region is automatically unmapped when a process terminates or performs an exec. However, closing the file descriptor does not unmap the memory map region. Okay, I think you have a fair idea of the system calls involved. Now let us move on to the Linux terminal and see the proof of these concepts. Uh, do see the man pages for mmap that is used for mapping files and m unmap that is used to unmap as discussed see the details uh, on this page to see the man page for m sync as well m s y n c that is used to synchronize a file with a memory map okay let's see a sample program that maps a disk file in its address space i've written a program for that that is mmap1.c let us review the code before i run it what this program is doing it is uh, using the open system call to open a file f1.txt in read mode and uh, we want to map the entire file so uh, we need to calculate its size i have used the lc call uh, to calculate the size uh, of the file opened by this FD and this uh, uh, zero means uh, the offset to which we want to move the current file offset and we have placed a zero over here that means do not change the current file offset and seek and will uh, means uh, with reference to the end of the file so finally this call will return the size of the file in this variable f size okay so this is the main call that is mmap having the six argument the first is null that is let the kernel choose a suitable address for mapping this is the size of the file size of the mapping we have placed the entire file size over here and uh, this plot read 
uh, I mean, I just want to give read permissions uh, to the memory mapped area. This is map private. This is the file descriptor of the file. And zero over here means uh, offset is zero. That is map the entire file starting from byte zero. Uh, remember to keep the code simple. I have not done any sort of uh, um, error handling. Uh, Please do catch uh, or check the return values of the system call and uh, do proper error handling whenever you are writing the code yourself. Anyway, after doing the M map, you can see I am just using the printf call to display the um, contents of the memory area pointed to by this pointer. And finally, I am unmapping the file uh, because uh, this closing of FT doesn't actually unmap the file. Hope the code is clear. Let me compile this code. GCCM map 1.c dot form slash a dot out. Let me show the contents of the file f1.txt. So these are the contents. So we have successfully mapped this file into the address space of this process. And I have read the contents of the file from the memory. Let us see another program uh, which proves that memory mappings are are inherited after a fork. Let me clear screen. mmap2.c. Okay. Fine. So there is a change, bit of change over here. I am opening the file and instead of doing lseek, I am just uh, using the fstat call this time. Uh, I'm opening the file in uh, read-only mode using the fstat call and uh, this fstat call is used to get the attributes of a file. We have used this in our previous sessions and one of the attribute is uh, size and this stat buff is populated with all the attributes of the file and this member of this stat structure contains the file size. So we have the file size in f size and this is the mmap call. We have just discussed in the previous uh, program as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, now the main program is doing a fork. And this is the uh, code for the uh, child process and this is the code for the parent process. Uh, you see the, the child process is just uh, accessing the memory contents pointed to by file data. That is the contents of the memory map file and then it is unmapping the file and closing the descriptor. The parent is waiting for the child process to terminate and the parent is also accessing the file data proving that if the child is unmapping it, it is not unmapped from the parent address space. Finally, the parent is also unmapping, closing the descriptor and exiting. Let's compile and run this program as well. mmap2.c and you see the child has uh, successfully accessed the memory mapped region and later the parent is also accessing the same region. So this proves that the memory mappings are inherited after, uh, after a fork. So far so good. Now let us see uh, another program now which memory maps a file and uh, then writes some text in the memory which is automatically written on the disk file. Uh, Map3.c Okay. Uh, so over here I am opening the file in read-write mode using lseek to extend the size of the file. Remember, since I want to write something or append the file so I need to grow the size of the file. So I have uh, created a hole. This lc call has created a hole of about uh, 100 bytes at the end of the file. Uh, but to actually increase the file size we need to write something at the end. We have seen this in our previous sessions that this will create a hole but it will not increase the size. So what I am doing is I am I'm using this uh, write system call 
and just writing an empty string at the end so this will increase the file size to 100 bytes then I'm getting the attributes getting the F size as I've done before and uh, then I'm doing the M map and over here you can note the third argument which is plot read bitwise over plot write pretty fine and after doing the M map I am accessing the data accessing the existing data of the file and then I am creating a string over here and I am uh, writing the string into the memory using the str cat call. Remember dear students, I am not writing onto the hard disk file. I am just writing this string into the memory. And now the uh, data in the memory map region will be uh, of course the existing data and finally we will have uh, this string as well. This is great. Then I'm using the msync call to sync the memory map region with the file contents on disk. I'm unmapping and I'm closing. Let's compile and run this program for, for this proof of concept. Let me show you the contents of f1.txt. Uh, just this, learning is fun with RF. Let me run this program and now you see. This is the existing data and uh, after writing the string, this is the new data. And if I see the contents of the file on disk, they are of course changed. And they say learning is fun with RF and this is great. Uh, okay, I hope uh, you have a fair idea as how memory mappings work. Let us fall back to the slides. And that is all. I hope this session was informative for you all, my dear students. If you have liked it, please subscribe my YouTube channel and share it with your friends. See you next time. Wish you all the best. Happy learning and Allah Hafiz.